and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Tuesday, November 8th, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for a bit later this morning. Uh, let's see, currently we have futures a uh, little bit up this morning, um, not too much, trying to extend a little bit of uh, strength of late. Dow Jones uh, up 29 points, the futures, uh, S&P futures up four, NASDAQ futures up 45, so on a percentage basis, looking a little bit stronger on the NASDAQ this morning. Um, it is election day, don't forget to go out and vote. Um, why don't we uh, jump in to the agenda for today. So I'll start off with the daily market recap, uh, then talking technically. Uh, got a little seasonality fact for you, breakouts and breakdowns, earnings spotlight, and then the three you must see. I uh, do want to have everyone go over to earningsbeats.com. Join me over here for a second. We have our fall special starting in just a few days. This is our best deal of the year. Uh, so make sure uh, you check out the site on November 12th. Those of you who are members, um, you know, check to see when you expire. This is going to be the best time to renew. Those of you who are new to Earnings Beats, if you want to take advantage of our special, um, I'd suggest first taking out a 30-day trial, and then uh, that'll give you time leading up to the fall special and during the fall special to see if you enjoy the service. And if you do, then you can uh, sign up for the fall special before it ends. And that by the way, doesn't end your 30-day free trial. You will get the rest of your 30-day free trial, and then this, the fall special gets added on to that. So that's one question that always comes up. Um, you know, if I go for the fall special, <clears throat> do I lose the rest of my 30-day um, trial? And the answer is no. All right. Um, so you need to be aware of that. For those of you who are new to Earnings Beats altogether, we do have a free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. All this takes is a name, email address, hit the subscribe button. There's no credit card required, and you can unsubscribe at any time. This is a three times a week newsletter, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Very, very quick read. Normally, it's just two paragraphs and a chart. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you check that out. All right, let's move on to the daily market recap. Um, looking at the action from Monday, you can see that the uh, Dow Jones is up 423 points, uh, S&P up 36, NASDAQ up 89, uh, mid caps 21, small caps 11. So on a percentage basis, all of them up about, uh, well, just under 1%, except for the Dow. The Dow continues to lead. I'll show you an interesting uh, seasonality fact on the Dow in just a little bit. Um, but overall, uh, I think the market's holding where it needs to across the major indices. Of course, the laggard has been the NASDAQ. So the, the key there is going to be the support that we had, that we established back in October. But if you're looking at the Dow, uh, we've been bouncing back off of the 20-day, came down, nearly tested the 20-day, and then bounced. S&P 500, sitting here right around these moving averages. You've got the 20-day uh, at 3775, 50-day at 3800 closed yesterday at 38.06. So we're just seeing a little bit of indecision here right around the moving averages. NASDAQ much more clearly in a downtrend at this point. PPO below the center line. Price action has been taking place mostly beneath the moving averages. The 20-day is below the 50. Look at the Dow. 20 days crossed over the 50. So a uh, big push here on a relative basis on the Dow. Mid caps holding on to its rising 20-day, which has crossed the 50. Same goes for small caps. So overall, the action's pretty good. The most disappointing part is the relative weakness that we've seen in NASDAQ shares. Looking at the sectors, communication services, haven't seen them on top very often uh, in 2022, especially over the last few months. As you can see, it's been mostly a down move, but 1.8% advance yesterday in communication services, energy up 1.7%, technology about the same, industrials 1% higher, and then utilities on the other end of the spectrum falling nearly 2%, back down below the 20-day moving average. This has clearly been one of the weakest areas, and it continued on Monday. Look out! Look at the uh, AD line. So you might look at technology and say, well, technology looks weak just like utilities. Look at the difference in their AD lines. 
Um, you know, technology seems to be weakening a little bit, but it's still much closer to its last six month high than its six month low. And you can see utilities at the six month low. So there's a little bit of a difference in terms of the way these uh, sectors have performed throughout the day. All right, moving on to the 10 year treasury yield. Um, you know, looking at this chart right now, it seems like we're right in the middle of a key range to the downside. I think a breakdown below these recent lows would be very good for um, US equities. Obviously, a breakout to the upside would not be so good. We're sitting in the middle of it. Uh, we were up yesterday, though. We were up about six basis points uh, to 4.21%. So it was a little bit surprising to me to see the NASDAQ um, gaining ground, given that we are starting to see the yields turn back up again. But I think the question is, do we break out? Uh, in terms of relative strength, I don't think there's any question, though. Financials and industrials. Once again, having a very, very strong, at least start to the month of November, these two groups really like the fourth quarter. Uh, industrials, October and November, uh, financials really throughout the entire quarter. So we'll see if that continues, but at least off to a good start here in the month of November. All right, moving on to uh, talking technically, we got the S&P 500, always like to start with this chart, clearly in a downtrend, 2022 downtrend continues. Uh, we did have a positive divergence develop early in October with these lows. And you can see the PPO turned up, but we've gone up now to the center line. Prices have gone up, pulled back. I mean, this is typically what you get after a divergence like this prints. If you have a downtrend, you get a positive divergence, you tend to go to the 50 and you go to the center line. If you're moving higher and you have a negative divergence, um, we tend to do the opposite. You know, if you're moving up and you have a higher high with a lower PPO, which we don't have here. But that normally signals a short-term move to the downside to test the 50-day and the PPO to move down to test the center line. That's what I look for. So right now, we're kind of in just this wait-and-see mode on the S&P 500. Um, just looking technically at the chart, I see really not a whole lot to like or dislike. I mean, obviously, the longer-term downtrend, you have to uh, say that is certainly bearish. But I'm talking about just in the very short term, moving above the moving averages, PPO slightly above zero, but then we went back below the moving averages. Now we're sitting right on them, um, just waiting, I think, for the next move. Do we break out above 3,900, which we know has been a key established level where the market has pivoted many times in 2022? Can we get through that level? Or are we going to move back below 3,700 and eventually make a move uh, toward that October low? That's the question, I think, in the short term, we're looking for an answer to. Transports. This is an interesting chart. I just wanted to kind of go over some things. First of all, I like to kind of look at the bigger picture. This is a two-year chart. And you can see if you connect some of these lows and some of these highs, we're in a fairly well-defined channel to the downside here in 2022. And we've had these moves to the upside. We saw July and August. We saw the end of February throughout much of March, but we never were able to crack this channel um, that we have that, that's still in play. Now, in the short term, we have another move to the upside and notice the PPOs cross the center line, but we did that before in both those instances. It didn't help us get through. The biggest problem is we continue to go up and down below these moving averages. So the overall trend here clearly to me is to the downside until we can break out of this channel. So I'm going to look up here at this recent high at about 14.2, 14.3. Um, and then also the channel line comes down to about that same level. We need to get through that. If we can get through that, you know, if transportation breaks its downtrend channel, that would be a pretty significant signal for us. But we can't assume it's going to happen. We need to see it. Short term, we're in this uptrend. You can see that we did on the last pullback hold on to our moving average support. We've got a golden cross, the 20 crossed above the 50. So we do have some positives here on a technical basis, but they're all very short term in nature. The more intermediate to longer term, you can see this downtrend is what we need to negotiate. So far, not so good. One last point, AD line, a new high. I mean, look at how, how weak we've been. Transportation sets a new high on its AD line. That takes a lot of afternoon buying 
to keep your AD line up where it is. And the fact that we're going up with the AD line breaking out, uh, again, we saw it before. We saw the AD line going up here July and August with price. We saw it back in March with price, and we kept going lower. So it's a nice signal, but it's your, it's a secondary signal. Nothing beats the primary signal, which is price volume. We've got to get back up and clear this area around 14.2, which is still another 3 to 4% away. If we can get through that, get some volume going, continue to hold rising 20-day, that rising 20-day moving average on pullbacks, that would all be much more bullish. Still got some work, though, to do. <clears throat> all right. I want to talk a little bit about seasonality here. But first, <clears throat> I want to show you this long-term chart on the S&P 500. So this is a chart that goes back 30 years. It's a monthly chart. I want to point out a couple things here. Number one, the high in 2000, the high in 2007. We did not eclipse that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We did not eclipse that until April 10th, 2013. So while a lot of folks look at the bull market and say it all, you know, the secular bull market started in 2009, I always wait until we get the breakout because it's easy to be a Monday morning quarterback and say that was the uh, start of the bull market. But we could have said the same thing here, you know, with the low in 2002. But we never got through this prior high. So this was just a cyclical bull market. This has turned out to be a secular bull market long term, but it wasn't truly confirmed until we made this breakout above this double top 2013. Now, I also get questions. Well, you know, when when would you say, hey, this is secular, this bear market that we're in right now? When would it be secular versus cyclical? Well, number one, you can see the channel. We remain still quite a bit off the bottom Um channel support line. We're bouncing right now off the 50 uh, month moving average, which is kind of a significant thing as well. You can see throughout this, once we went above the 50 month moving average back in 2011, we have yet to close a month beneath it. Not one. We were, we closed right on it in March during the pandemic, opened below the next month, and then took right back off to the upside. So we haven't had a a month closed below the 50 to 50 month moving average. That's one thing that would need to happen. Obviously, in this secular bear market, we saw plenty of that. The other thing is look at the monthly PPO. You know, we were in just a bear market. It didn't really confirm into a secular bear market until we saw the PPO break below the center line. And also the monthly RSI dip below 40. Remember, short term versus long term. You're not, you know, in a short-term pullback, like in March of 2020 in the pandemic, the PPO went down, but it only went down for a period of time and then right back up again as prices turned back up. In 2015, 2016, you can see the PPO getting close to the center line, turned back up. So, you know, and if you go back and study prior bull markets, you'll see that when you get a PPO that's up around 10 that obviously tells you you've had a lot of strength. And so usually after a lot of strength is when you're going to get a little bit deeper pullbacks. So this is, I mean, back in January, I said 3,500 was my worst case. And it's, we got the 3,491. Let's see what happens from here. Um, I'm not going to assume it's going to keep going lower, especially when I didn't think it was going to go lower to begin with. So let's see. I mean, if price action breaks down, I mean, you've got really good price support here at about that 3250 level. You've also got good support here at 3500. So, this is an area where I would expect that we would turn and we'll see what happens. Um, but right now, the PPO is still positive, the monthly PPO. And look at the monthly RSI, 47, still well above 40. So, if you're going to have a long term secular bear market, your monthly signals have to turn more bearish. They're Heading lower, but they haven't reached a point where we normally would see a secular bear market. So I think there's still some time there. We'll see what happens in the year end. Um, anyway, 
the whole point there was I wanted to show you that April 10th, 2013 breakout because looking at the Dow Jones versus the NASDAQ, this is I wanted to just look during the secular bull market. So what I did is I pulled this slider back to 10 years. So that this gives us from 2013 to 2022. So that gives us the entire um, secular bull market so far. And I want you to look at how the Dow historically has performed relative to the NASDAQ. This isn't just a chart of how the Dow does each of these months, but how it does relative to the NASDAQ. And if you look at the first eight months of the year, the average Dow performance relative to the NASDAQ is negative in seven of the eight months. Only April have we seen an average, have we seen out, average outperformance by the Dow Jones. So if you come across, you add these up, and I was showing this to our members last night in a uh, uh, webinar that we, we had at Earnings Beats, but I thought it was an interesting chart. If you add this up, minus one, minus 1 1.3, minus 1 1.4, minus 1.1, Minus 2.3, 3.15, 6.4. So in the eight months, first eight months of the year, the Dow Jones throughout this secular bull market has averaged underperforming the NASDAQ by 6.4% in the first eight months. But in the last four months of the year, we have positive numbers. I mean, look at the September and December, roughly 80% of September's and December's, we've seen the Dow outperform closer to 50% in October and November. But all of these are, you know, compare favorably to what we saw during the first eight months of the year. So this has been an, a historical norm. I know there's a lot being written right now and talked about with the Dow, rightfully so. The Dow has been outperforming by a mile. But looking at the seasonality chart, it's not so crazy. Over the last four months of the year, that's 1.5, 1.8, The Dow has averaged outperforming the NASDAQ by 2.5 points, percentage points, during the last four months of the year. That's an average. Now, obviously, this year it's been a lot more than that, but the average is 2.5% in the last four months of the year. So I just thought that was an interesting fact and kind of goes along with history, uh, or at least the history over the last 10 years within this secular bull market. All right, let's move on to breakouts and breakdowns. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do, I just went through and pointed out a number of companies that have either recently broken out, recently broken down, or perhaps are on the verge of one or the other. Um, and so I've just pulled up uh, maybe, let's see, six, seven, looks like eight charts. So we'll go through these eight and uh, take a look at them. The first one here, Tesla annotated, but you can see the low back in May, the low again in October, and look at the close yesterday. Tesla broke and closed at a 52-week low yesterday at 197.08. Uh, I'm a fan of Tesla, but I'm not a fan of their chart right now. Uh, AD line, back down near 52-week low. Uh, the price action just set a 52-week low. Look at autos. Autos down at a 52-week low right now. Tesla relative to autos, lowest level that we've seen since back in January, near a 52-week relative low. Versus the S&P, it's at a 52-week relative low. Autos versus the S&P, near a 52-week relative low. Tesla doesn't look good right now. I, again, I like the company. I think, you know, years down the road, I think it's going to be a great, great one. But stocks go through periods where they are not in favor. And right now, Tesla's not in favor. ABC, this is uh, Marisource Bergen Corp. Uh, the double top here at 165, look at that false breakout, big volume on Friday of last week. We were up a little bit yesterday, but 165 is the number. A lot of times you get that false breakout, you'll see a short-term pullback. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a 20-day test. If we do, anything back down below 155 starts to look pretty interesting to me. <clears throat> Hamble Soup, top there. Right about $51, a little bit above $51 there. Right here at about $51, triple top breakout, end of October. I would like to have seen a little bit more volume, but we did make a breakout. AD line's confirming. We've pulled back now. We've hit the 20-day moving average. I think on a short-term basis, I like Campbell right here. It's a key support and the 20-day. AD line looks good. 
It's relative strength versus food products. Just recently, 52-week high, you can see it's been uptrending versus its group, its peer group. And its peer group is setting new highs versus the S&P 500. So for those of you who are just looking strictly at technology and uh, consumer discretionary and some of the aggressive areas, there is an alternative that's not as exciting. But if you're looking to hopefully preserve your money and maybe try to make a little bit while those other areas are still weak, I think a stock like Campbell's makes a lot of sense, especially on a nice setup like this. So Campbell's, I thought, looked pretty good. CRM, salesforce.com. Speaking of technology, right down here at support, trying to hold. We had a false breakdown on Friday. That was a 52-week low intraday, but we did manage to come back up. Candle body held support. Then we rebounded yesterday. Watch the 20-day to the upside and watch about 139 to the downside. Don't want to, you know, I, I think we're right now trapped in that range until we get a breakout one way or the other. Uh, Lockheed Martin in the defense area. Don't know if you've been paying attention here. We had a double top up here at about 470. Right through it. Volume's been pretty strong. AD line looks good. The relative strength of Lockheed Martin back near 52-week high. Um, you know, defense stocks continue to trend higher versus the S&P. Solid group, solid stock. It's just a little stretched. Watch for, remember, 470 is a price support level and the rising 20 days at 460. So anything down in that range would be interesting to me. LYV, Live Nation Entertainment, breakdown on very, very heavy volume, losing the, this recent price support. If we bounce back up into that 74, 75 range, the 20 day is starting to decline. That's at 77 and change. I don't know, 74, 75, maybe even intraday as high as 77. Um, if I was in it, I'd be getting out. I don't like the look of this chart. O'Reilly. This one actually looks really good to me. Uh, we had a nice move up, cup, short little handle. Look at the volume pickup on this breakout. Uh, this would measure from 750 down to 680. That's what, 70 bucks. That would measure to 820. Guess where we are? Right around, well, right now we're at 830. So we've made the measurement on that cup. Doesn't mean you can't go higher, but it did make that measurement. That's what you're looking for when it breaks out. Uh, to the downside now, you've got price support at 750, and you've got that 20 day moving average now at 786, and you've got gap support at uh, about 780 or 775. So lots of support on pullbacks. I would be looking to accumulate on a pullback. I think O'Reilly looks good. Last one I have for you is Occidental Petroleum. Lots of tops up here right around the 75 level, maybe just above 75. Yesterday, we closed at 75.97. Volume was starting to pick up a little bit. AD line still looks fine. You can see it's in a strong group. It's been a decent performer in a group that is breaking out versus the S&P. These are the types of stocks that are working right now. And, you know, if you're a short-term trader, you stick with them as long as they're working. Bounced beautifully off that 20-day moving average on this latest pullback. Now trying to make the breakout. It's been going sideways for a while. Look at the relative strength on the stock right back here. Um, we actually set a high in May as it was breaking out in terms of price action. And then we ended up uh, with the group going up. We kind of stagnated here and consolidated a little bit right in here, which led to some underperformance. But then we actually went right back up again. We held, OXY held down here while the overall group continued to sell off. Then we've started to see the group pull back, you know, pick back up again. I think if we get this definitive breakout right here, you could see Oxy begin to lead again, uh, this area. So I, I like the stock um, and any 20 day test, or, I mean, even at this point, if we get continuing strength here, that's a breakout. So if you like to trade breakouts, it's pretty early in the breakout. Um, I wouldn't be as concerned trading it. Maybe if you want to take a little bit more conservative approach, um, by half and consider a second entry if we get a pullback to the 20-day moving average. Earning spotlight. Um, let's see. We'll just take a look at some of these companies that will be or that have reported either last night or this morning. Um, so let me give you those or just a couple of those. The higher market cap companies, the first one is ATVI. Let's get an update here. That was from earlier this morning. That's up 45 cents, so just fractionally. Diamondback Energy, 
Fang. This is a really nice looking stock, but it could be one of these buying on the rumor. We're getting a little bit of a sell off, not much, just a buck. I think if we get a sell off down to that 20 day moving average, I think Fang could be very interesting. Well Tower, this is a specialty REIT. Um, not seeing any uh, pre market action after reporting last night. International Flavors, this is a specialty com uh, chemical company. Also, not seeing anything that's kind of unusual. Mosaic, uh, this one's up fractionally, just four cents, another specialty chemical. Uh, how about Solar Edge? This is one that usually has big reactions. And it is again up $28, up 13%, 239. So it's back up near this recent high. It's got that. It's got all of this overhead resistance from 250 to 260. It's got its 50 day moving average, which is just below 250. It's got some work to do even after the gap up, but it is at least heading in the right direction if you're on the long side. Uh, Shockwave Medical last time had a huge reaction to its earnings to the upside right here. Look at it today down nine bucks, down 3%, 268. Um, still kind of in this range. I think as long as this. 240, 235, 240 area holds on the stock longer term. I'm fine with it. So I expect just more sideways consolidation there. Um, how about this morning? Um, looking for the bigger market cap companies. Uh, let's see, DuPont, DD, up almost 4%. That's going to be a breakout right there above that 63 level. Nice start. We'll see if we can hold it into the close today. Uh, GFS, this is a semiconductor company, up 8%. Semiconductors, by the way, have been performing pretty good again, which is uh, encouraging. We'll see if that continues. CNHI, commercial vehicles, um, also up about 4% today. And we've been trending higher here, breaking out above the high from just a few months ago. So um, CNHI looks pretty good. All right, let's move on to the three you must see, and let's wrap this up. Go through these kind of quickly. First is uh, PBR. Uh, this is a stock that actually on very heavy volume has started to roll over, failing at the moving averages on the last test. AD line rolling over, relative strength really falling apart here. Be careful. I don't, I don't like this breakdown here. Any kind of a move back up near 13 I think would be a sell there. BMRN, this is a uh, uh, Biomarin Pharmaceutical, also breaking down below this key support area right around 82.50. Volume has been picking up, AD line turning down, very similar story there, be careful. PLTR, same thing, breaking back down, look at the volume picking up, AD line, which wasn't that strong to begin with, looking long-term, rolling back over again. These are three when you start to see these stocks rolling over in downtrends, especially in downtrends, be really careful. That's it for me. Have a great day, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow on Wednesday over at Earnings Beats for your next Trading Places Live. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.